Today we're gonna to make a mobile table saw cabinet that also supports the extension wing. My initial idea when getting this saw was to build one big massive cabinet to take advantage of all the space underneath the tabletop. Once I actually got the saw and realized how heavy it was, I scrapped that idea very quickly. I've seen other videos around making a cabinet under the right part of the tabletop, but there were a few things that I just didn't like about them. First, none of them really went all the way to the end of the table. They stopped at the two supporting legs that come with the table itself. I didn't like this because I think one, it's a waste of extra space you could have used, and two, I can't use those legs anyway because I propped this off three inches higher than normal, so they didn't even touch the ground, so those things are doing me no good. So that wasn't an option. The other thing I didn't like was that most of them were mounted to the saw itself, and when you made it mobile, all that extra weight was being hung from the actual tabletop, which is supposed to be supported heavily, not more weight added to it. So I didn't like that either, especially with all the weight of all the drawers and the cabinets and everything inside of it that would be added to this. On top of that, I also plan to add a router table and a cabinet for that as well, which would be even more weight this thing would have to haul around. My goal here was to have a mobile cabinet full of drawers that the extension table could rest on for support when in use. Then, when the table was lifted, the cabinet would move with it, but it would not be attached to the top where it would have to support all the weight for it. Then, when lowering the table back into place, it would need to line back up so the supports were in the right place. The other thing I wanted on this was for the drawers to go as close to the ground as possible. When putting casters on a cabinet, you lift the entire cabinet up into the air, whatever the height of the casters are. By doing this, you use all that space underneath the cabinet. Since this will be supporting the weight of a heavy saw, even with casters on it, this is not going to move very much at all. So I decided to recess the casters inside the cabinet, allowing about a half inch clearance for the slant of the garage floor. This will allow me to take advantage of all the space between the casters versus just wasting it. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell as it really helps the channel out. To get started, we're gonna go ahead and rip this plywood down to size. Here I'm using a hole saw to drill out the four circles at the bottom to allow the casters to spin and not make contact with the edges. Once that's done, it's time for assembly. These little boxes will support the casters and most of the weight of the cabinet, so it's important that they are very strong. For the drawers, I will cut dados to receive the bottom panel. These drawers are gonna be super simple, just butt joints since it's only for the shop. 
Although you wouldn't know that because I don't know how to use a camera. This here is my preferred method when putting in a bunch of drawers. I use a couple scrap pieces of plywood or MDF and cut them to the height that I need for the top drawer slides. This guarantees that they are the same height for both sides. Once these are done, I cut them down to the length of the next slides below and rinse and repeat. I never have to worry about any of them being off or not lining up properly using this method. Since I'll be painting the cabinet, I decided to use edge banding to clean up the edges a bit. This is far from necessary, however when I built my wife a bookshelf out of maple plywood a couple years ago, I ordered way too much. So for me this was an excuse to just use it all up and one less thing I had to store. Once that is done, we move on to mounting the casters. Here I just eyeball them, ensuring the casters can fully spin in place and not touch the edges is all that really matters. You won't even be able to see these so they don't have to be perfect. Next, it's time to throw some spackle on the seams, give it one final sanding, and then we're on to paint. Sure, someone's gonna comment on the flip flops. Well, it was hot out. If I'm cutting or doing something that requires heavy objects, I'm always gonna be in shoes because of safety. For tinkering around the shop, sanding, painting, things where my feet aren't in danger or I'm not worried about slipping and causing some kind of accident, I'm gonna go for comfort. This paint is magical. They claim one coat primer and paint, and especially in black, that's hard to do, so I was kind of skeptical. However, it went on flawless. I did put on a second coat on high touch areas just to be safe, but I don't think it was even needed. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but I was really impressed with this paint, so I'll leave a link below in case you want to look at it yourself. Next, we need to remove the legs from the table saw so we can slide this bad boy into place. So to support the top, we'll be using these adjustable feet. And normally, because they're called feet, these go on the bottom of the cabinet. You tighten these toward the ground to level your project out. Instead, we're gonna flip these over, attach them to the top of the cabinet, and adjust them to properly support the extension wing of the saw. You can see once this is actually complete, the friction of the cabinet supporting the weight of the table saw holds this cabinet firmly in place. Even with no breaks in the casters, when I open or close these drawers, this thing doesn't budge at all. Now the trickiest part of this cabinet for me was to get the cabinet to move when the table is mobile, but then also line back up when I lower the table saw back down into place. I went through multiple different options. I tried angled boards trying to get it to lower into place. Second, I attached bolts through an aluminum guide to try and get it to line up. However, because the table saw raises at an angle, this failed miserably. Third attempt was to use these plastic cones. Again, not as support themselves, just to get the actual cabinet to line up properly. The thought was as the saw lifted up, these cones would still be contained inside a piece of wood mounted under the tabletop. As it lowered into place, it would self-center around these cones, lining up the actual feet to support the top properly. After playing with the alignment and adjusting for gaps, it worked great. If I only lift the saw halfway, which is normally where it's at when I move it, the cabinet will move with it. If I lift the saw all the way up, I can remove the cabinet if I need to. Now I just need to organize, fill up these drawers, and this one is complete.
overall, I'm very happy with how this cabinet turned out. It gives me a ton of extra storage. I think it looks great. I don't have pieces and parts for future projects all over the shop like I used to because now they're in the drawers. I'm very happy how it is mobile and when I move this saw, it travels with it. But when I lower it, it realigns and stays firm and actually supports the tabletop itself. So overall, it's kind of a pain to figure out, but in the long run, well worth it in my opinion. I hope overall you enjoyed the video and please let me know in the comments below if this gave you ideas for a project of your own by chance. If you're new here, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell. If you want to help support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon at the end of the video. To those already contributing, thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Special call out to the gold members. As always, thank you guys so much. To everyone else, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.